The Walking Dead Empires has been out for several months now and I've been playing the game almost every single day testing the weapons, skills and talents so you don't have to. Here are two builds that you should be using to deal insane damage and a general all-rounder build. So let's get to it. So I'm just launching up the game. As you can see in the background, it's running. But before we do that, you know what to do. Hit that like button, smash that subscribe button if you are enjoying the content that I've been releasing over 2024. Now, I'm going to log into my Daryl character because I reset his skill points just for this video before I started doing the prep. So now we just need to wait to log in. And this is going to be two builds. We're going to start with a general outline for both builds because I believe this is the go to must use of the first like 10, 15 levels that you go to as the skill points use. So to level up your skill points, you click on upgrade and you have the skill tree. Now I am level 60, so I have 59 skill points available. Now at the start, most people generally go damage to walkers, but I don't think that is a good idea at the start. What you need is survivability because you don't have the good armor. You don't have the weapons. You don't have the stuff you need at the start to be able to deal that damage and survive. You need to be able to tank hits at the start and be able to get to a higher level before you can start respecting your skill tree. So for that, I believe the first two points that you should put into is armor. The reason you want to go down this skill tree is because armor at the start, when you don't craft any like armor pieces and it's generally tier one, it's not going to be good to craft them because you're going to outgrow them fairly soon. So just getting a 20 armor flat buff is going to do wonders for the low levels. You could also go the damage versus walkers route later on, and then you can go damage versus animals, and then you can get to this. This is the one that you want to aim for, which is flat damage. Now, the reason you want to go for flat damage over specific target damage is because flat damage works across everything, whereas specific damage only works for that target. So damage versus walkers, you're only going to get the damage versus walkers. So instead of spending 10 points in this skill tree, you might as well just spend the 10 points in the damage skill tree and get 20% damage to walkers, to humans, to animals, to everything. I had a little bit of something in my throat there, but so to get to that, we need to put three levels into health regeneration. Now, as you can see here, the padlock with the number is going down. So what that means is you need to use that equivalent amount of skill points in the previous tree before you can unlock this tree. So if I press apply again, it's going to unlock this tree, but the other two are still the same because none of these have the amount needed to unlock this skill. So now that we've unlocked this skill, you want to at the start, just get it to three to unlock the crit specialist. So we're just going to pump three points into there. And now we have unlocked the basic start line for most builds. So what you want to do is max out crit specialist. Now this is going to be used in every single build. The crit specialist skill is one of the best skills in the game right now. Why? Because it gives you a 10% crit strike chance and crit strike damage is increased by 100%. So if you deal 2000 damage normally, if you crit, you're going to be dealing 4000 damage, which is one of the best multipliers in some of the games that I've played. For example, Champions Arena, it is a 1.37 or 1.4 multiplier. And then if you have crit gear or crit damage gear, you can increase it. Whereas Walking Dead is basically doubling your damage right away. So this is the bread and butter of both builds. You want to basically go down this tree. And this is the starting points for both of the other builds. Now, the first build, which I'm going to show is going to be the all rounder build. It's going to be the crit specialist build. It's going to use both melee and ranged weapons. The second build, which I'll go over after I do this build, is basically a specialized build that focuses on one type of playstyle, either melee or ranged. So once you get to this point and you've maxed out crit specialist, you want to pick either melee or ranged for what you normally use. Most people are going to pick melee because they use swords and swords are pretty busted in this game. And when you get to a higher level, you can pick range specialist. So we're going to be doing both, but let's start off with ranged. We're going to max out range specialist. And then we're also going to max out melee crit specialist. Now, if you are going the specialist route, you only want to max out the one that you will specialize in. For example, if you're going to go swords, then you only need to max out melee crit. If you're going to go guns and ranged weapons, you only need to max out ranged crit. Now, this is the primary skill tree. You don't need to touch it for now. Let's head over to the secondary skill tree. 
Now, if you are doing melee, you want to unlock this skill point tree right here. And then if you are doing range, you want to unlock this skill tree point right here. It doesn't matter where you start. You can start from any of these because once you get to here, both of them will unlock these two and they will unlock this. So it basically depends if you want either health or energy. Now I'm going to go with energy because you can get health and you don't really need a lot of health early on once you get to the point where you're using the secondary skill tree oh my god it's a horde okay let me quickly cut the video i'm gonna deal with this horde and we'll be right back and there we have it we have annihilated the walker horde so i'm gonna go back into my base i guess there's a couple of them stuck there let's just quickly kill those before we continue I'm gonna use my shotgun because i do love a good shotgun now we can continue with the build video so let's open up our upgrades tab or you can just press u and we are back in the skill tree so as i was saying you only need to go through one of these because then it will unlock both of these later on and i would rather have energy region rather than health region because the health region can come with food and if you're using for example swords you're going to need that energy region so i've used three skill points in energy region which unlocks melee damage and range damage now you want to put two points in both if you're going the all-rounder build or you want to put two points in one of them for whichever ranged or melee specialist you're going. Since we are going to go the all-rounder build, we are going to unlock both and then you get an extra 5% crit chance with this skill tree. So we'll do that for both of these. There we go. Now we have two points left to use. And what you want to do is basically pump that into damage. The reason you want to do damage, as I said at the start of the video, instead of getting specific targeted damage, you want all round damage because it will work for every single situation. Now my character is level 60. So this is a build for level 60. Most people are around level 50, 60. So once you get to this level, this is the basic outline of the all rounder build. Now from here, you basically want to pump more into damage and then you can scroll down on both skill trees and then specialize in a type of weapon. For example, if you want to go handgun, sniper, bow, crossbow, shotgun, assault rifle, you can go the extra damage to pole arms or uh, blunt weapons, axe and swords. And then you can do melee stun chance, melee knockback, uh, melee bleed, and this will be the range section. And you can also get the extra damage for some of the weapons here. So this is the all-rounder build and I would stop here for the all-rounder build. Now that the all-rounder crit specialist build is out the way, let's switch to the specialist build. So for the specialist build, you want to make sure you don't put any points in the other type of combat that you're not going to use. And for our demo, we're going to be doing melee. So you don't want to put any points in ranged range crit chance range damage. And then this one also range crit specialist with that, you get roughly 17 points back. And I'm going to tell you where to spend those 17 points. I would put five points into damage, max that to another 10% damage boost. Then we want to go down to here and unlock this. Put another five points into axe and sword specialist. So you get another 10% sword damage boost. I wouldn't go for the melee critical damage because it's only a 1% increase. You don't want the extra 5% melee critical damage increase because these skills give you the 10% damage up front and this one's only giving you 1% damage. If this was another melee critical chance, then this would 100% be worth it. But since it's crit damage, it pales in comparison to actually the flat damage. Because if you get 2% flat damage and then you double it with a crit, that's basically 4% damage. Whereas this one, it's only going to give you 1% critical damage. So you have to crit to only get that extra 1%. Whereas you crit with flat damage, you're going to be getting 4%. So another 3% damage. Now, once you go to there and max out damage, you have seven points roughly left. And what I would do is I'd go back to the primary skill tree and go to this one here, which is action sword specialist. And you want to max this out, put the rest of the points into this, get it up to 10. So you get another 20% damage. And this is basically going to give you an extra 30 to 40% damage compared to the crit specialist build. So you have an overall raw base damage increase. And then when you do crit, it's going to be dealing a lot more damage. You can also flip this to do it the rain side. So if you don't want to go swords and you want to go, for example, sniper rifle or you want to go shotgun and assault rifle. And if I did have to go specialist range build, I would go shotgun and assault rifle because of the changes with the crypt meta right now. I would go assault rifle in this tree 
and then if we go back over to the secondary skill we'll go the shotgun assault rifle package here and that would be my choice if i went range specialist if i went melee specialist 100 percent swords and then if you go all rounder which is my current build i would go with the crit chance now from here on out to level with the all-rounder, you basically want to increase the damage and then you want to start building on the thing that you use the most. So right now I use shotgun and assault rifle more. So I'm going to focus on the assault rifle and shotgun combo. Now let's quickly discuss talent points because you're going to need to use them to make sure you get the best out of the skill trees and skill points used. If you are going a range specialist, then you want to make sure you max out the ranged weapons in your talent tree. If you are going as a melee specialist, you want to make sure you max out the melee weapons in the special tree. Now, depending on what type you go, there's different things you need to consider. So for melee, you're going to need to consider food and medicine at least level two. I will recommend medicine two for both builds because you unlock large bandages and that is the currently the best way to heal. And if you craft higher star ones, you can just keep like five, six large bandages and it will cover you for your grinding session. Melee is going to be using more gear because you're going to get hit more and it's going to be using more food and medicine because you're going to run out of energy and you're going to need more large bandages because you're going to be taking that damage. But the payout is you can deal more damage. I believe it's faster. You have a constant flow of movement if you are farming on a map just look at dark rift and Wu lin they are currently the leading levels in the game and i believe they both use swords as their choice of farming however in rank 3 we have my boy chaos and he uses ranged weapons chaos is a ranged weapon specialist he burns through ammo like no man's business he is constantly looking for gunpowder ammunition and chemicals and i have to say his masteries in some of the weapons for example assault rifle sniper rifle handgun they are off the charts i can also imagine dark rift and wulin have insane sword masteries as well as walker kill masteries but back to the talent tree so we covered ranged it's going to be using food meds and gear because you're going to be taking hits you're going to need to replace your gear more often. You're going to need the bandages to make sure you heal and then food to recover the energy cost. Ranged, on the other hand, doesn't require a lot of food, doesn't require a lot of meds and doesn't require a lot of gear because you're not going to get hit. So you don't need to replace your gear often. So you can build a really nice set of gear, reroll the attributes like my boy Chaos does, gets an extra 50% damage on assault rifles and you are going to be laughing. You hardly ever need to replace your gear as a ranged combat specialist because you're never going to get hit. You're killing them before they reach you. The one thing that ranged does use a lot more of is ammunition, chemicals and gunpowder. As I said, when I discussed chaos on his leaderboard. So instead of burning through food, meds and gear, you'll be burning through ammunition, gunpowder and chemicals. Which of the two is more cost effective? I believe melee is more cost effective because the things that you need to craft the saber are generally cheaper than you need to craft some of the ranged weapons. Armor is easy to craft, medicine is easy to craft, food is easy to craft. Armor can get expensive if you're re-rolling for certain attributes. If you're just crafting armor to make sure you have enough armor on top of your base armor to make sure you're not taking a lot of damage when you are farming walkers, then it doesn't matter. But if you are building for specific builds and re-rolling and crafting for specific attributes then armor can get expensive out of the two builds the melee is the most cost effective compared to range because range you are burning through a lot of ammunition and supplies but the range combat allows you to kill things from a distance and move at a constant pace without having to stay still to hit the enemies if i had to pick with the current build i would go for melee because it's easier to craft the swords the swords are awesome they deal aoe cleave damage they are easy to maintain and it is generally cheaper to use. If you are a madman though, like my boy Chaos, and you just want to go a full on range specialist, burn through the ammo, gunpowder, chemicals, you're going to need to get yourself a pocket smasher, a pocket Thor, or a pocket AKM. I guess you could throw a pocket Lou in there as well because Lou gathers a lot. Basically, what I'm saying is to make the range build more viable from to make it so you can constantly farm. You need other people to feed you resources or you need to buy the resources of other people for a little bit of gala. With the current build and the current playtest, I would definitely recommend melee. And in the future, you never know, range could overtake melee, but it could still be very cost intensive. 
So these are the two builds that I would recommend people use in the Walking Dead Empires. Do not use the targeted specific skills like for walkers, for animals, against humans. You want to get the flat baseline damage and then you want to specialize in the weapons that you are using the most. Now, some of these skill trees do not work. I believe like vulnerability, I don't think vulnerability works. I don't think piercing chance works. I don't think the ricochet currently works in game. Wood harvest durability lost. I haven't gone down to these skills and I haven't tested them because I don't really see the use for them right now. And the people that have put some points into them say they don't notice a difference or it isn't a currently working mechanic in the game. For example, melee bleed chance or drop ammo on kill. These could work and these could be good skills to use in later builds when you are higher level. Maybe later on in the video, I get Darkrift, Wulin or Chaos to jump in and share their thoughts on how to level fast, efficiently and how to continue the grind. Because this game gets grindy after you hit level 45, 50 ish. Every level starts to take a toll on you and I'm waiting for dungeons to come out before I start grinding properly. Also, I'm waiting for medicine to actually be useful. So if you press C and then you go down to medicine, there is a thing called sleeping tablets or sleeping aid. And this basically gives you an XP gain for a five minute duration. So you want to keep a lot of these when this is working, probably in the next couple of builds. Uh, when this works, you want to be using this as much as you can to get that experience boost. So you don't have to continuously kill like 100,000 walkers. You can kill like 70 or 80,000 and get the same experience as the 100,000. That's pretty much it for this video. Hopefully you've learned what skills to use, what not to use, what weapons, what armors are efficient for certain type of builds and how you should prepare for the next build that is coming in the next couple of weeks based on what Doug has hinted in the Discord. If you enjoyed the video, then leave a comment down below. What is your place down? What build you are using currently in the Walking Dead Empires? Also, while you're down there, smash that like button and hit that subscribe button. To keep up to date with all the Gala Games news in the Gala Games ecosystem, I play the Discord minigame, so you guys don't have to. All you have to do is follow me over on X. You'll get all the important announcements over there on my Twitter or X. If you want to chat when I'm not online or talking to you through a video or live streaming, then join my Discord. It is the easiest way to get a hold of me and I respond to messages there first before I go into my DMs. Main reason for this is I've turned off private messaging for all my Web3 gaming servers because I do not want to get scammed. But if you join my Discord personally, I've allowed messages or DMs to go directly through to me so you don't have to be my friend to send the message. One final thing, if you do plan to buy anything from the Gala Game Store, then you know what to do. Use the link in the description. It's completely free and it's the easiest way to support me as a content creator. That's me wrapping up this video. Make sure you check out either one of these videos to learn more about The Walking Dead or to learn about the Gala Chain Marketplace. I'll see you guys in the next Gala Games ecosystem video.